the shooting range. In this episode, the new mechanics of light tanks, we take a closer look at active scouting and airstrike modules. The Hotchkiss H-35, or how the French military tried to get a new light tank without really trying. Hotline. The developers answer questions that you've left in the comments. But first, let's start with an armored car on His Majesty's service. We look at the gameplay on the newest non-French vehicle. AEC Mark II is a modification of the famous armored vehicle based on an artillery tractor. It's a reward for those of you who got seven Christmas toys for tankers during our festive quest. Was it worth the work? Let's figure it out. First of all, this is an armored vehicle and not a tank. It just happens to have a turret and a 57mm gun that shoots every four seconds and pierces up to 126 millimeters from 100 meters. That much firepower allows you to wreck practically anyone in your battle rating. But there is a slight problem. You've got only 25 millimeters of armor. Oops. Also, there are only three crew members. That's why. Forget about meeting your opponents face to face. If you see enemy vehicles that you can't flank, let some of your better protected friends go first. The AEC Mark II was not built for the front line. As for speed, this car can run up to 40 to 45 kilometers per hour on any road and a lot faster, up to 78 kph, if you manage to find a perfectly straight and smooth road that nobody watches. Which is probably not going to happen. And since you've got no tracks, you'll lose a lot of that speed going off-road, slowing you down to approximately 32 kph. That means that it's a good idea to stick to roads or road light surfaces while going about your business. It's also worth keeping in mind that you have no smokes and that enemy planes can get you even if they've only got 20 millimeter cannons. So how do you drive this thing? Given your size and protection, or lack thereof, the best option is to rush to the nearest capture point right at the start of the battle. Just be careful and don't forget to look out for enemies coming your way. When the deed is done, ideally, wait for your teammates that have some armor before going any further. If you do everything right, you'll have enough time to have a cup of nice English tea before they come along. When they do, you have to choose. You can support their attack from behind or test your luck and flank the opponents on your own. Both options are not perfect, but both of them mean that you'll have impact on the course of the fight with a chance to do some serious damage. Since you've got no smokes, the first scenario is considerably more dangerous even if you have some cover. That's why we recommend the second option here. Flank your opponents and try to get behind them. Mark their vehicles and shoot anything and anyone you see. Change positions constantly as you'll become a primary target after only a couple of good shots. One last thing. Remember that the game classifies the AEC Mark II as a light tank. So don't forget to use the active scouting and the airstrike modules. And now, since we've mentioned those new mechanics, let's take a closer look at them. The gameplay on light tanks can be very challenging. They don't have a lot of protection, and speed doesn't solve all your problems. So in update 1.75, we made those machines a bit more interesting for you. Now, the modification tree for all these machines, starting from tier 2, contains two new modules available for research. They're called Active Scouting and Airstrike. Let's start with the first one. Before this update, if you wanted to make your teammates aware of an enemy vehicle, you had to get a visual on them 
and then report their position to the chat or put a marker on the map. Now, a scout's life has become much easier. You just need to aim at the enemy through the visor and press the active scouting button. After that, all your teammates will see your target on their maps. What is important is that you are rewarded with points for both successful scouting and also when a marked target is destroyed. That means that you can help your team and get some extra points at the same time. Good scouts also get an extra artillery strike in arcade mode and in RB they can spawn a plane at a smaller cost. That's right. Now the light tanks can do a much better job just being themselves. But we've decided to spice their gameplay up even a little bit more. So here's another module that's called Airstrike. Now you can join your allies on a strike aircraft or a bomber in an active air battle in Arcade and get into the sky faster in RB. You want even more? Yeah, thought so. On top of everything we mentioned, light tanks can also repair any allied vehicles, not just their squad mates. Of course, new mechanics change the tactical environment in battles. Expect to see new tactics and strategy guides in our next video. And now let's talk about a story of yet another French tank. During World War I, France was one of the world leaders when it came to tank building. The French were the ones to create, build and use the first tank with soon to be called classical layout, the Renault FT. The design of this relatively light infantry support vehicle turned out to be very successful. So despite having the production starting only in 1917, by the end of the war, the French had more than 2,500 of those in service. Incredible numbers, right? The Renault FT was light, simple and cheap, exactly what they needed during the war. But after it, the French couldn't let all of this tank's disadvantages slide. It was frustratingly slow, had awful endurance and poor undercarriage lifespan. Its tracks could turn to dust after only 200 kilometers. France needed to get a good replacement for the old FT. And that's where they got stuck. At first, they were trying to improve the FT itself. During the 1920s, Quegres and Renault came up with an in-depth modernization plan. The FT was to become a completely new vehicle, good enough to be exported to other countries. But now the military command wanted 30 millimeters of armor, a 47 millimeter gun, and later another crew member, a radio operator. So the design team came up with not one, but two machines, the D1 and the D2, but were both unsuccessful and got only limited production. There was no other option on the market though, so even by the 1930s, there was still no replacement for the obsolete FT. And then something happened that nobody could possibly have expected. Usually, manufacturers don't lead the dance when it comes to creating new machines, which is perfectly understandable, of course. They patiently wait for exact specifications from the military, do their best, and then hope to get the order. But in 1933, the Hotchkiss company suddenly showed up at the command's doorstep, with a project for a new vehicle that nobody had ordered. Its hull consisted of cast details connected with bolts. It was a new design solution that considerably lowered the cost of the tank. Also, in order to make it lighter, they ditched the turret and placed the machine gun in the hull. The military were hooked, that's for sure. But just to be safe, they still organized a tender for this order. The results were as unexpected as the whole situation. Fourteen competing companies took part, though only five of them made it to the prototype stage. One of those was a tank by the Atelier de Construction de Puteaux that lost the competition, but had a very well-designed cast turret 
that was quickly, uh, let's say, adapted to be used on other tanks in the competition, including the Hotchkiss. In the end, the top brass decided to order the new Renault R35 tank. It was very similar to the Hotchkiss one, with the same Poutot turret and cast hull included. Perhaps there was some foul play, because the Renault got such a big order way too quickly. Also, perhaps, there was the reason why the Hotchkiss suddenly decided to withdraw from the competition. They still found a way to profit from their project, though. Of course, the cavalry also wanted new tanks, and the famous Samoa S-35 was still in the works. So they took the Hotchkiss light tank into service and called it the H-35. And they never regretted this decision, as it was even faster than the R-35. Consequently, the cavalry and the infantry command got themselves a couple of very similar and well-designed light tanks. Get ready for the traditional last part of our show, Hotline. Developers answering questions from the comments. The first question comes from Severin Baltos. War Thunder for Nintendo Switch? When? You know, using the Switch motion controls for a battle actually sounds badass. It actually does, mate. But for now, we don't have such plans. As we said in the previous episodes, we've got a lot of cool stuff to introduce in the coming months. After that, eh, we'll see. No promises, though. Then there is a question from a user called Not So Edgy. Are you still planning on doing the history of the vampire FB5? Yes, mate, we still are. It probably won't be out for a couple of next episodes, but we haven't forgotten it. Pentatome writes, You said Char de Bataille de 90T instead of 40T. You're right, mate. Our bad. Thanks for pointing it out. The last message comes from a player called Zach Waits. PO2 is 2OP backwards. This is proof we need to immediately buff it to BR 9999999.7. If you say no, <laughs> it's gulag for you. Bro, we've already said that the PO2 will be our first candidate for the BR 11.0. Baby steps. That's it for today, but feel free to write your questions in the comments below. We do read them all, and you might see some of them answered in the next episode. If you like what we're doing, don't forget to subscribe to our channels. See you on the shooting range.